Ladies and gentlemen, fans of LCS Challengers, welcome back. We just had a 1-1 between Disguise and EGC. Hopefully you stuck around for this upcoming match, because this one, I don't know about you guys, I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit more of a bloodbath between Team Fish Taco and Wildcard, two of our teams that, uh, at least for Team Fish Taco, have recently promoted. Uh, Wildcard had a couple of changes, another one actually coming in today, going to be interested to see uh, what that looks like but definitely two teams we feel like are posturing in the middle of the standings and part of what you called earlier at desk that hodgepodge will a fifth that we're still asking a lot of questions about you know i i still view as the top four a little bit more definitive with all the challengers rosters plus the skies being there but as you said when FlyQuest and supernova are right next to each other anything can really happen from fifth and below and it's going to continue with wildcard and team fish taco who i think team fish taco have been uh at least a little bit more impressive than We we're kind of like putting a lot of emphasis on some of the members that we are familiar with to step yeah. up and it feels like a couple of them have yeah and i feel like it's really worth pointing out that spawn in particular has been having a lot of success and rose thorn it's had a bit of a slow start to start the season, but it is going to be something where we're going to be paying a lot of attention because we've seen so much success come out from Timmy over the course of the past couple weeks. Yeah, and on the other side, Wildcard actually does have a change today. As at support, we will be fielding Don Bray instead of Duo King, uh, someone that a little bit of a reunion for the 100x Otwainer lens and Don Bray at some point. Yeah, it's definitely a very interesting switch coming through, right? We had four of the returning members from Wildcard, and now as they are still trying to figure out all of their visa problems, they are moving on from one support to another, and Dombre has going to be, has had a couple of opportunities to kind of showcase what they've done in the past. Yeah, I do want to highlight that the expected support for that roster is Isles uh, when that visa is secured. So uh, Dombre stepping in until then will be good to see. I know some of that is good on the engagers, but... Also, Desrux, I know that someone else that we are pretty excited about coming on up is that new face for Wildcard in Zamuda. Man, it, it, there's something about wildcard top laners in NACL. You know, Moose Hater was a very interesting one, but Zamuto will continue that trend of just having these incredibly quirky picks. I mean, in the very first day, this guy's already locking in Karthus. If you watched him back in uh, the Proving Grounds era when he was on AoE, he was locking in stuff like Draven Top. And he's performing well in lane despite all this. Has pretty much won every single lane matchup that he's had. Um, has become this unkillable brick wall that you can see even Shaden struggling with this uh with that in this interview he's been in a very impressive pickup in a, in a very impressive debut split from zamuto yeah I, I think a couple of our lcs top laners could actually take some notes for how zamuto plays this gragas in lane oh, uh, yeah. not to mention some of the fights as joshi uh some of that we had some expectations for this split and it's been a pleasant surprise that he's meeting some of them yeah, I mean, we have gotten to see that Zamuto really does feel like big man on campus, just waltzing around after five games of Gragas so far in the first week. And we knew that this guy was going to be very good mechanically. The question was going to be, could they integrate into the challenger scene? The answer has been a resounding yes thus far. Yeah, we knew Zamuto could play the off meta picks, but the CM performed so well on the Gragas has been really refreshing and promising for that player. Uh, so a new face that's stepping up. But then also we have a face that we are familiar with who we feel like is actually physically stepping up more in the fights and doing better. Someone that I know you're pretty excited about, Joshi. You highlighted him earlier, and that's going to be Spawn. Yeah, Spawn has been a player who has had some LCS experience, but was a relatively defensive player throughout most of their career. We would say that they were a 70% player. They'd go for the 70% fights where they were likely to win. But now they're willing to go so much more aggressive than anything we have seen from this player in the past. Well, you know, they are still figuring out a couple of times when they can go aggressive. The fact that they are trying to make these big plays happen is a big point of growth for Spawn. And in this particular clip, we see, you know, he does get excited. He goes the wrong direction, not knowing exactly where everybody is. But that's the kind of thing where you do that enough times and you learn, it's like, hey, maybe I shouldn't go that way. And we can see so many different plays. This particular clip, I picked it up because this is the kind of thing that 2022 spawn would never have gone for. He does not take these angles historically, but seeing this point of growth from him is going to give a lot of uh, hope over to Taco Gaming. Uh, he fish Taco. That killer instinct on Marksman, always something that can come in handy. Uh, something that I, I agree, Spawn has been lacking, uh, but to see him pick up on that and hopefully continue to improve that landing phase, really what we're looking to see from Spawn is he tries to get back to that level uh, for LCS. But uh, while we will be following his path, 
I think it's time to hit on another adventure that we have. Uh, and that is going to be on the side of Wildcard, Joshi. Yeah, I mean, it feels like a whole new adventuring party. Now, this is what we had in spring, right? You have every coming through, playing different roles, and we still have Duo King on here because we have not seen exactly how Dombre will be affecting their play throughout the course of this split. But it used to be you had Moose Hater. You didn't necessarily know a whole lot about him coming in, but he would always come around. He would be an insane flanker, always going for the sneak attacks. But as we go into a new one, as unfortunately the Moose Hater character dies, and then we roll up a new one, <laughs> we got Zamudo coming in. And the thing that's crazy about Zamudo is we were saying Saligo was the paladin of the team. He was constantly making sure nobody was going to be able to sneak attack them. And wait, we dropped our rogue for a second paladin? We now have two people trying to make sure that nobody can ever get towards the back line? It's kind of crazy because it puts so much more pressure now on, Z on Lens as the DPS for the team. He has to do so much damage for the rest of the roster, but he's also set up to do it in a way that he has not been set up by wildcard in the past. I, I know that Lens, at least for me, is someone that I had a pretty big highlight on as he did have that ability to step up on champions like the Draven, Callista lane really well, earned some bans, and that was someone that I, I think that with this new setup, still looking for a, a wee bit more from Lens in this early season. To hopefully yeah. he can return some of that form from spring. Guys, I'm going to leave that to you to find out as we've got game one draft coming out up between Team Fish Taco and Wildcard. Take it away. All right, Josh, I got to talk to you about that Photoshop. Why yeah. is Moose Hater half a head like from the, from the waist head, up he's just head his head needed to be the same size as all of the other players you know it's not favoritism the fact that he's sure he's just, it's just it's a gnome <laughs> that is being played this time around i feel like that kind of summed up a lot of what moose hater was looking at right he wasn't necessarily the kind of player where everyone's like this same guy way. is smashing everybody he's just going for all of the big plays and zamuto is much more of a player who kind of walks around now, if i had a barbarian on that party image i probably would have used that instead because he will just waltz on in be angry throw all these big emotes out but now he's start getting into it this Gragas has been taken off the table. The only other character we've seen him play so far at this split has been Karthus, and I would be surprised if that's the kind of thing they're willing to play into Lunasia, who has been our solo killing his player in spring. Hey, give me it anyway. It's a wild card game. Last time they were willing to give evil geniuses both Zeri, Yumi, and Nico. I don't think they care about the draft as much as just getting their favorite, most comfortable champions. As uh, we are completing the first end of the draft right now, of the Nico and Gragas band away. One more band coming out of Team Fish Taco before we get that first pick from Wildcard. And honestly, we saw that the Milio was taken down relatively easily. Ah, okay, easily is a strong word, right? We did see that that game with Evil Geniuses went a long time, but the it Yumi is available, the Milio is available, the Zeri is available, and Wildcard are actually going with the Milio. Now, they did play it when they had Duo King last week, and it was not to great success. It didn't feel as though it was something that uh, they had put a ton of time into. But on the other side of the map, I mean, they have a Yumi available. The cat is there and Team Fish Taco say no. We're going to be giving spawn a Phalios instead. Yeah, Phalios as well as Cassante locked in for Team Fish Taco. Now, here is my question. What are we going to see picked up by Zamudo? They've banned away the two champions that he played in week number one. So we're going to see something different from him. True. I mean, that's a really big question, right? We know, as you were talking about before, that this guy has played a lot of unique things in the top lane over the past uh, several weeks, or the past several splits. I I would not be surprised if we were setting up for an opportunity for Zmuda to play another tank, simply because having already seen this uh, marksman come through for Keel, you don't want three marksmen on a team, right? Like, it's going to be so tough for you to get anything done if you ever fall behind in that kind of roster. The game will probably end. But, Kiel, I want to bring us back again to what we saw from them last week. They went uh, lane to lane to lane, got four kills, but they fell behind like six camps in exchange for it. And after they died a couple of times, ended up giving up all that money back. Josh, the Yumi got locked in. Yumi got locked in. I know. Yeah. I was hoping to ignore yeah. it. I was hoping. I, I was hoping we could like fully ignore it out of the draft yeah. itself. Now, uh, we'll talk more about the homie hoppers that are at the cabana when you have to deal with them. But we do have the Syndra uh, band coming through as well. You will know exactly what I talk about. We'll bring it up during the cast. Yeah, but we do have a lot more pressure getting put down on Saligo's champion pool, right? Saligo has been so good at preventing a lot of players from coming in as yeah. flankers, and while 
in their first series, I criticized Rosethorn very heavily for not going for flanks. The second series, I'm like, oh, he doesn't go for flanks, and then he just does it 20 seconds later. So we'll see what kind of things Rosethorn will be able to do. I'm honestly expecting a Wukong as the most likely champion, and if they can't get that, probably a Vi going over to make sure that Rosethorn has some go buttons. I would also like to see what the mid lane pick is going to be for Team Fish Taco because Ona is someone who I didn't think had the best week one, but had one that, in my opinion, does show a bit of promise. Uh, there were a lot of Flash Tibbers plays. Not all of them really I'll worked out, landed. but the fact that Onat is attempting to be an active part of the team is huge, in my opinion. So I, I, I think that shows potential for growth coming in the future. Yeah. That being said, though, Annie is going to get banned away, so Onat will not be able to play that champion. Kha'Zix ban coming out of Wildcard, taking that away from yeah, I, I want to go back to that Onat discussion though, because the question is always hashtag O Nation or hashtag No Nation, because <laughs> Onat is always a player that is super, super confident, loves to talk on Twitter as well, and is convinced that they can show up a lot of different players throughout this event so far. And we know that they can go for a lot of these big plays. They are not afraid to try and make things happen, and that yeah. at this level of play will help you grow super, super quickly. As we do start looking at the rest of the draft, no surprise, it is going to be the Rose Thorn coming, excuse me, the Wukong coming out for Rose Thorn. We saw some great things on this champion last time around. Rose Thorn for Wukong. You should have just stuck yeah. with it. Yeah. Yeah, pretend, yeah, we'll, we'll pretend we didn't notice, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I like this because it was one of the uh, clips that you highlighted, Josh, during our little pre-show for that. It was that flank that Rosethorn was able to do after you just criticized him for it. Uh, it was a big, big play for Team Fish Taco. It's going to be a little bit difficult this time because there are a lot of ways for Wildcard to defend themselves. We already talked about the kick from the Milio, but Call of the Forge God as well as the Lamps Respite. It's going to make it a little bit tricky for Rosethorn. Yeah, and... I also want to point out that this Orn is another specialty pick by Zamudo. Yes, most top laners can play it, but Zamudo in particular, we saw how optimized uh, he was with all of his Gragas combos. We'll look for a lot of very heavily optimized combos from the Orn as well because of how much work he has put into this character in the past. He will be able to chain a lot of the brittle procs in order to make sure that somebody has no opportunity to do anything right on back, and that's one of the things that Zamudo had a lot of success on. Now, the last opportunity opportunity for Team Fish Taco coming through. They need to pick up a mid laner going into Saligo's Azir. And all right, fine. It is going to be the victor coming out from Onan. Not the most exciting champion in the world, yeah. but you have lots of opportunities to be relatively aggressive on this champion early in order to put Saligo in a tough position. But Saligo is also one of the best laners that we have in the league right now. Yeah, that makes it so much more tough for Onat to really stand out when you don't have that kind of just point and click initiation, get it done in the blink of an eye. Now you're going to have to take, uh, you're, you're going to have to participate in the rift a little bit more than just the oh. team fight. Uh, eh, darn it, darn it. I just want a team fight, Josh. I am the part of the game that I am the best at, but so as we take a look at this one, there is opportunities for Lunasia to try and look for some of these solo kills, but we have been asking a little bit more from Lunasia over the course of this split thus yeah. far. Considering how well they were able to play in spring, it's been a little bit of a lackluster sophomore split coming out for Lunasia, but this is still a game where they can go really big, especially if they can have a good laning phase to put the scaling tank behind. Our game number two now ready to hit the Rift wildcard versus Team Fish Taco. Twitch chat, let us know who you're rooting for. Type in WC for wildcard or Taco. Taco, not TFT, Kangas, uh, for Team Fish or Taco. Fish. It's Taco. Should be fish. It really should I, be I fish. wish it was fish. But it is not us who decides these things. It's Team Fish Taco, and they do have fantastic merch as well. But while we wait for things to actually get started, I do want to... You, you know what the story is behind the homie hoppers that just, like, live in the backyard? The homie hoppers in the backyard. No, I don't yeah, know the that cats. story. Okay, so oh. yeah, so Jensen Go, right? He would say he would watch the cats come through, and there is a couple of stray cats that uh, live right next to uh, Kangas and Mazel, and so yeah, they I've would seen two of them. Yeah, well, really the cat cute. would come around, and the cat would, you know, Mazel would come up and be like, "Oh, look, nobody's fed this cat," and feed the cat and fill up the bowl. And then Mazel would leave. And then the cat would come back to the door, and Kangas would be like, oh, I bet nobody's fed this cat. And then he would fill up the bowl, then he would leave. And then Mazel's wife, Nanny, would come to the door, see the cat, and be like, oh, I bet nobody's fed this cat. And then feed the cat again. Caesar, my cat, would do the exact same thing to my mom and my grandma back in the day. 
You know what? Uh, it's respect. You got to get fed somehow, right? And yep. uh, you're out on your own. It's tough out there in the streets, Josh. You got to yeah. hustle. Just remember, Eric, if you never feed the cat, just assume that somebody else has done it. But anyway, as we get into it, it is worth noting that the only cat that we have on this field is going to be NXI. And NXI has been another player who obviously recently uh, role swapped from the jungle. And so far, yeah. NXI has been kind of there for a lot of the games of Team Fish Taco so far. Not necessarily going for anything super impressive, and oftentimes when they're going to try and make some of these bigger plays, have not had them work out. But I'm willing to attribute that mostly at this point to a lack of familiarity with a lot of these champions. And based on a lot of their play on previous teams, I still feel as though NXI will have opportunities to showcase that they can learn this role relatively quickly. Again, it's a, it's a developmental league, so it is the place to try and expand on that playset. Uh, we, we had criticism of, uh, of NXI in the first week. I, I remember you were looking at some of the plays that was NXI was wide. doing, and it's like a more experienced Rakan player would have actually pulled that yeah. off. But, you know, That's it, the thing, it's right? Fine. It's fine. That's we it. know they're not uh, experienced at this. It's, it's yeah. not as though it's a criticism to say a more experienced player would have been able to pull this off, because like, you know by like week three or four, some of those plays start working out a little bit better. But as we do take a look at how the junglers have been pathing, we do have Keel and Rosethorn. Keel moving towards the bottom side of the map and Rosethorn towards the top, so we just get a straight Coin flip, you guys, as to whether or not Kiel will get his first mark. <laughs> see, we'll be eyeballing that pretty closely as uh, full clear is now going to come out for Kiel. So we'll see which uh, crab is going to be the one. Uh, hopefully this bottom lane for Kiel, just because he has so much priority already established by Lens and Donbre. As well as Saligo holding it out against Onap. Yeah. But nope, it's the top one. It's top Dang one. It. I know there's like some internal logic that makes it like more likely to spawn where you're not. Um, but it's not like a hundred percent. So I'm sure Kindred Mains would correct me as to exactly, you know, how likely it is one way or another. But it will be no opportunity for Keel to do anything with that. And also, interestingly, not going for anything right off the bat in terms of some of the aggressive pathing that got them some wins uh, throughout last week's games. This time, just going for a full clear, not willing to go for any dives or any gangs towards the top side of the map. And Honestly, I kind of like this playstyle a little bit more from Keela, right? While you do need to take some risks early on in the game to get you to your two or three items on the rest of your characters, you don't need to be forcing plays that aren't there. Yeah, especially on the Kindred. You don't want to fall behind on that champion. You're marksman as it is, so you need to get that income to actually have an impact on the map. Now, Kill is going to be on this bot side river. Uh, the recall coming out from Donbre links up with Kill, so putting the presence onto this bottom lane right now, Kill might be looking to set something up. Yeah, they do see Rose Thorn. They do have that support coming through, and this this is a very dangerous position for Rose Thorn to be in. His kill jumps. And kill hopping right in, forces the flash out of Rose Thorn, looking to steal it away. Oh. No, Rose Thorn will secure his own Gromp. All right, well Rose Thorn loses a flash, but does get the Gromp, and now Spawn's running. Oh, Spawn flashes forward, gets the root on the kill, forces the flash out of kill. Onat still with the chase, but doesn't have much mana to work with here. Get him! 300 health remains on kill, and he's still creating more distance, still creating more space. Ooh. One more laser to go out, but kill is A-OK. -okay. Ooh, I mean, that's a lot of commitment coming out from Team Fish Talker to try and find that kill, and kill still walking out, and Dombray now getting caught. Ombre in the face of Spawn, but it's only Spawn. Still in the early game, yeah. Aphelios is not that scary. I hate to say it, but I think uh, that's another moment to say that NXI, a more experienced Yumi, probably secures them that kill. You saw the Q go wide right into the Raptor pit. That slow probably would have been enough for Spawn to keep up and get the next auto attack down. So we will see how much that ends up hurting them because Lensel has both of the summoner spells and they're already trying to be a bit more aggressive. and. With the way that Spawn has been trying to play for this team, where they're playing more aggressively in lane, more aggressively in team fights, they're just setting themselves up both for success and opportunities to uh, give the game away. But I love the fact that this is how Spawn has been trying to play this season, because when they were on Dignitas, yeah. they would never take any risks. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of people were pretty harsh on Spawn. I brought this up before, that it was a meta that was just, let's 
just go into the bot lane and dogpile over there and see what happens, yeah. right? And that's a lot of pressure for someone who plays a defensive team fighting role. It's not allowing them to get towards that uh, spot of the game where they can flourish most. But now that we're uh, having Spawn back down here on Team Fish Taco in Tier 2, I feel like it's a good place for him to develop that, and I think he pretty much agrees with some of the plays he's been making, Josh. Yeah, I, I think the other part, as Rose start starts looking for this, so it's going to be a tough steal, but he does have the cat. All right, going to back off. Is a similar thing that what we were seeing with Young, right? Young, after their time in LCS, comes down into the Tier 2 play and just says, yeah, I have nothing to fear from any of these players. I need to prove that I'm better than them. And I feel like Spawn has had maybe a similar realization that they are going to be the ones trying to make all of these different plays happen because yeah. they're not afraid of anything that is around down here. They know what they can do. They've played against the LCS. They've played against the best our region has to offer. And these are the players who are trying to find their way to that spot in the first place. Spawn fighting his way back up so far with a good start on Team Fish Taco to try and get that next step of progress. As it is right now, though, for the map wildcard, kind of edging out in favor thanks to that dragon they took earlier. Gonna be a recall from Rose Thorn before he finds his next attack on the map towards this top side where his red buff is spawning. Also, the Rift Herald has some priority from Lunasia. Yeah. And look at this, where Akil's on the opposite side of the map, trying to see if there's a play to be had onto spawn while there is no flash available, and hop the wall. Um, yeah, he's in the bush now. Oh, and spawn gonna realize that he is in danger. This is no man's land. Returns fire on the Dawnbreak. Will force the flash out, but first blood. Let's make it a double kill. Gonna share it off with kill two. Going over to wild card. Yeah, just a cat. Can't do jack. Just goes down again, but it is gonna be Rose Thorn getting the rip on the opposite side of the map. But that is that is going to be tough here for Team Fish Taco because it has been spawn who has been the primary carry for this team so far. And yeah, as kill. Hops the bush right on over. There's not a lot that Spawn can really do. It's just getting run down from this position. And even though they get close to taking down Dawn Bright, with the flash available, no actual risk was taken. He knew that he could get away. It's a rough trade right now, accelerating both of the marksmen that have been drafted on the side of Wildcard. And one kill over to kill, another over to Lens. And that gold lead uh -oh. now going in favor of Wildcard. Team Fish Taco want to turn that around. Cyclone going to be used on to kill. Lamps for Spike gets popped. Still have the Emperor's nice. Divide on the edge. The all out from Lunasia denies the Lamps for Spike. It's a trade one for one. Saligo now duking it out. But look at Lunasia nice. take the route of escape and claw up the face of Saligo. Great stuff from Lunasia in that last fight. Again, as he called out, taking kill out of Lamps for Spike and then hunting down Saligo as well. Fighting right on back, right away. And so, one of the things that we were looking at from Lunasia now that they have all this gold is they, in previous seasons, or in last split, I suppose, they weren't always sure what to do with that lead. They mostly were able to find some success on characters like the Jax in some kind of split pushing opportunities. But this on the Cassante is a character that is much more focused on going for these fights. And we are seeing that so far, getting the lead, not the problem. Knocking the Kindred right on out of the fight allows them to take them down. Uh, it, it reminds me of when you'd grab uh, Gragas as a response to Kindred. Just the all out is so much more brutal though, because with a wall just like that and the angle that he took, you go miles you away from zoom. your ultimate. Yeah. And it's honestly great stuff. He's already got the Jack Show completed, and now Rosethorn can contest for this. Scuttle Crab won't be able to do it. Or they will. They will. Yeah, Lunasia's there. That's the Jack Show completed, so Lunasia is hard to kill. Mythic very, very early. They're just going to forfeit this. Team Fish Taco securing the Scuttle Crab. Yeah. One other small thing that we haven't touched on, Eric, is the Victor Dollars uh, that Ona was able to pick up. The Victor Bucks, right? Every time you get a kill or an assist, any takedown, it's 25 Victor Bucks. And one of the things that you always get with Victor is pretty much regardless of the matchup, once you get your first 100 Victor Bucks and your lost chapter, you're free for the rest of the game. Like, you, you can never really get pushed out of the lane just because your laser is going to be killing the back line of minions. Basically, all the time. There's a couple like AP breakpoints to be aware of, but Onat now has a free lane here in the mid just because he's gotten that little bit of assist, that little bit of extra gold altogether. Always keep in mind, he still is the rookie of NACL going against one of our more experienced players. So even though it still oh, is in oh, his favor, oh. be a tough trade. Now Zamudo 
first is Lunasia. Zamudo flashes away to get out of the depth grip of Lunasia. Yeah. Zamudo's doing a good job farming up here in this top lane, but Lunasia, now that they've gotten two kills, is looking quite good on this Gasante, forcing out the flash from their opponent. And we were saying that if Team Fish Taco really wanted an angle to try and push this around, it ha one of the ways to do it is on Lunasia, pushing around Zamudo. But I I'm going to be honest, Eric, the fact that Wildcard have a lead right now with a tough top lane, a tough mid lane, and a bottom lane that can kind of go uh, towards their side, really good for them. Now Team Fish Taco setting up around the dragon. Kill out of position. Lunasia is going to punish. Forces the flash out of kill. Will change his attention towards Lens. Lens for Spike going to be burned away. Out comes the Moonlight Vigil. Now Teleport going to be found. Saligo comes in. Emperor's Divide lands right onto Rosethorn. But Saligo uh -oh. has to head for the hills. Kill low. Saligo low. Both of them get dropped at the hands of Spawn. We were saying before that we were looking for opportunities for a wild card to try and find their way back to get themselves the cushion needed to scale, but giving over those two kills suddenly looking really rough. That's going to be a dragon getting picked up for Team Fish Taco. But just as we were saying, the fact that Wildcard is still holding a gold lead is really good for them. They have the Azir, they have the Jinx, they have the Kindred, they have the Orn. All of these characters will be scaling into the game as they try and drop this Rift Herald. It's a great read from Team Fish Taco that they are a little bit overextended. And even though Donbrae slows down the attack, they're still able to get on in. And unfortunately, Saligo, I think he based the rest of his team, right? This yeah. is not the Azir where you build Ludens and suddenly you're doing crazy damage. Ooh. This is the Azir where you need to sit there and auto-attack for a long period of time. The flank doesn't do almost anything. Saligo gets almost no damage down. And while he's been so good at anti-flanks, this flank was not it. And a little bit of credit to Onat. He was able to sidestep that Emperor's Divide just on the edge of it. He would have been also sent in with Rosethorn. I think you have a better chance for Wildcard to get a kill if you have the mid lane carry there. But uh, I sidestep from Onat does prevent True. that nonetheless. Now Wildcard. No, they have that gold lead. They still are giving out some of these small wins to Team Fish Taco. They got to be careful about that. Yeah. We also just heard Onat get the uh, 200th Victor Buck. Right, getting the extra move speed in order to move around these team fights. The one issue that we are going to be seeing coming out from Team Fish Taco is, as we're touching on, they are one, a little bit outscaled, and two, definitely outranged. Jinx will be able to fire from a further distance than Spawn will throughout most of the fight, and that does mean we need to rely on more aggressive Spawn. Here we go again with Rose Thorn right on to Saligo. Emperor's Divide is off cooldown, will protect Saligo, but that ultimate cooldown is going to be burnt away. Same time that Rift Herald is spawning pretty soon, so down a pretty major tool here if Wildcard want to contest it. Yeah. I mean, that's two major tools down, right? The Chaos Storm is a lot of damage that Onat will be missing. Does not have a completed item just quite yet, and so... I expect that Wildcard will probably go for it as soon as the Lambs or Spite is available again, right? You have Zamudo pushing on the other side, and one of the things that you can kind of see on the minimap is he's actually using his E to go for a lot of efficient wave clear. This is, a, again, a player that really thrives on knowing these micro-interactions between characters and minions in particular. And we do see that it is going to be Wildcard starting to up the Rift Herald in order to try and find even more opportunities to put Team Fish Taco behind in gold. And it makes it for such an interesting matchup between top laners. I mean, with Zamudo, he did so well in that first week of play when it came to laning and just leaving lane yeah. as this unkillable monster. While Lunasia back in spring, what was it, 24 solo kills on the regular season, kind of uh, surprised and exceeded a lot of our expectations. Uh, it, it, it kind of feels very interesting seeing both of these two up yeah. here just because, you know, it's now the rookie split of uh, Zamudo. Last split, it was the same for Lunasia. Yeah. We'll see how well Zamudo can continue this trend, right? One of the things that I love listening to him talk about is just his willingness to be more aggressive on tanks than a lot of other players. And it will give them a lot of opportunity to be one of the star players for Wildcard. And now, again, they're playing the same kind of role as we were talking about before, right? They are that second Paladin, the second tank right up in front, making sure that everybody else is as strong as they can be. But Wildcard, they should be feeling pretty good about their chances for this upcoming Dragon, which I think will put them in a much stronger position, right? If they can start 
finding Team Fish Taco in these fights before Aphelios hits three items, before Victor hits three items, Wildcard should be able to transition that lead into ignoring the fact that Spawn and Onat will be doing enough damage later on. See a little bit of skirmish going on between the two top laners right now. Game State 2K in favor of Wildcard. That dragon you mentioned spawning in the next minute and 20 seconds. Wildcard continue clearing away the waves in the mid lane. It will sense Ligo over towards the top side. He does have teleport available. Same thing with Onat. If they do want to meet down towards this uh, dragon pit, look for a little bit of fisticuffs. <laughs> I love the fisticuffs. I, I, I think both teams should be looking for opportunities, but one of the things that we were looking at, right, Rose Thorn. The one time I was criticizing him for his flank, uh, I'll call it a micro flank, you know, as I, Miguel O'Hara goes for the back there as Lunacia does it. But uh, it was a micro flank, right? He didn't need to set it up in advance. It's just something where it's like, oh, look, there is an opportunity to walk around this wall real quick. Whereas in order for Team Fish Taco to go for some of these engages soon, it's going to need to be a prepared flank. You need to be ready to go. You need to get it set up before the actual fight starts. And now with 26 seconds left, Rosar does not have time to prepare a flank. He, if he wants to find one, it's going to have to be one of those micro flanks. And he was trying to get one a little bit earlier on the top side to get a gank onto Saligo, but great presence out of kill to be in that area and dissuade that oh? uh, situation. Now Spawn in the wrong place to be, forced to burn his flash mm. at the same time that Kill putting down the Rift Herald. Ooh, that's a lot of damage getting put down as well. It's gonna burn a lot of mana from NXI as the Rift Herald will crash. Lunasia gonna get cut out from the fight a little bit. It doesn't look as though Team Fish Taco ready to fight for this dragon much at all as they try and teleport Onat in. It's gonna be a front to back team fight, but this is the perfect position for Wildcard and Zamudo on this flank. Those Team Fish Taco is too far away to even contest. And he has the call of the Forge God. He alt, can alt, start alt. this fight if Wildcard want to go for a oh. kill. He's looking for something. Call the Forge God going to be used it's right so big. on the ramp. It's going to land on to three. Wildcard pull the trigger. Kill standing in that front line. Rosethorn goes in, though. Will get dropped by Salivo. Oh. Lanasia is deep. Health bars are low, but not low enough to give a kill right back to Lanasia. Three fall. Wildcard team fight win. Oh, it looks so good for a moment, but Wildcard able to stand strong. And we see the D&D &D party coming to full fruition, right? Let Ends back here in the back line, able to get so much damage down as both Zaligo and Zamudo prevent anybody from actually being major threats. As soon as Rosethorn comes in, he's pushed right on back out. Lens is able to go back to free firing and NXI, he steps out of the thing again, giving the reset over to Lens. Oh, that's tragic. I didn't even see that the first time. Lens able to do all the DPS he needs to do as its fighter. Oh, the pain. pain. The pain. It gives a 3.3k lead now over to Wildcard, and this is where things are starting to look even more grim for Team Fish Taco. As you were mentioning, Josh, Wildcard scale. Wildcard will scale so well. They're actually at one of the strongest points in the game for Lens. Now that they have the two items completed on this Jinx, this is where they can really pop off and try and prevent spawn from ending three. Oh, kill! Kill! Get him! Okay, you know, Crunchy Taco over in the top lane. Go ahead and grab some Gromps right after that. You know, it's a full-on buffet for kill right now. Yeah, he's just consistently going super aggressive now that they have the Trinity Force completed. They're going to be getting in this top lane turret. The gold lead will continue to expand in Team Fish Taco. We were looking at Lunasia originally being the primary carry. Has not had an opportunity to do much since the initial couple of kills. Now we're starting to turn our attention towards Spawn, the player we were looking at in the first place. Right, row. He does have red-white. If Wildcard go for this fight, but only putting up vision will give respects over to Team Fish Taco. So will Rose Thorn towards Wildcard, gonna back off as they fight over the Raptor camp. You can tell right now that Team Fish Taco, they don't feel that confident in their position. They are gonna hinge a lot of their bets on spawn for these 5v5 team fights. Yeah. But they also have a very, very strong lens. Up 2k on the next closest member on the map in terms of how much money they have. And, you know, in our D&D &D party, we said that they were kind of like the fighter, right? There, It's all about getting the action surge off so you can swing twice as many times on your turn as you normally would be able to. Is and that lens, what excited is? The exactly. Surge. That is getting excited. That's the action surge. And 
crazy thing is, is if you kill something, you get to action surge again after that. So, Lens has so much opportunity for DPS output in this upcoming fight. It's all about finding an opportunity to be safe. We can see the range differential already coming through, making it so difficult for Lunasi and Spawn to walk up. And I think Wildcard, they might actually feel strong enough to start going for this Baron. Azir and Jinx will do so much damage to it. Action Surge is supposed to cool down on a long rest, Josh. What's going on here? What are, yeah, what it's are home these brew. home rule rules coming out from Lens? You know, you know, eventually you get a uh, high enough level that you can Action Surge multiple times. Fair enough, fair enough. I think that's level like 18, I want to say. It's very high. No, well, I did I, it at a level I think 16 after character. Performance, you can kind of count as a level 16 character. Yeah. I mean, he's already level 12, so, you know, it's not that many more levels to go, but we have a minute and a half left until we get to the next dragon. We'll find more dungeons on our way there, but Wildcard have been looking so good so far in this game. There was that one misstep that they had down in the bottom lane that uh, really put them in a position of struggling, but after that, even, even there, they still maintained a gold lead because they have been laning so well across the board. And now as we start looking towards the next dragon, again, question becomes, can Rosethorn find a prepared flank or is he relegated to only looking for these micro flanks? And as it is right now, I mean, Team Fish Taco aren't really getting that forward vision going, which is going to make it that much harder for Rosethorn to get one of these creative angles to give Team Fish Taco a chance to get into these fights. You can see right now, Wildcard, Forward Vision. They're posturing up around this Raptor camp looking to deny more from Rosethorn. Yeah. Can Team Fish Taco even find an angle to get a flank going? It's going to be super tough. And now we see Sligo back in a way. Should be on two items for this upcoming fight. Zamuda level 14 can start giving away some of those Orn upgrades to different items. And Rosethorn, I mean, coming in towards the middle of the fight gets punished super heavily as Kiel takes away nearly half of his HP. That should be enough for Wildcard to secure this third dragon. And Team Fish Taco, they, they really can't do too much about this because they're coming from the red side of the map. You're going to be on one of these two ramps. The Mudo can hold the line like no tomorrow. We saw it on yeah. Gragas. It's a whole different monster on this horn. And you can see right Rose now, Thorn? they're lined up perfectly for a call. The Forge God knockup going to be found. And now here comes the Mudo, stopping the engage of Rosethorn, leaving Rosethorn all by himself. And just like that, it's a fiesta. All the tacos are consumed, and Wildcard will take the ace. That was... Picture perfect coming from Wildcard. The setup was so good. Your double paladins is the League of Zabuto, making sure that only one person, only Rosethorn, can get into the back line. And he was torn to shreds by Kiel and Lens. No opportunity for Team Fish Taco to even try and take that fight. And everything looked perfect for the side of Wildcard. This was something they were so good at. They were so good at creating setups and denying theirs of their opponents. This was the exact same version of Wildcard we were so used to seeing in spring. That was incredible. That was that last fight because you had Smudo just holding that flank. None of the carries could actually move forward. Rosethorn's by himself. And even the members that do get in, Sligo's like, I... Nah. Yeah, I mean, the crazy thing, right, is that the moment where Saligo goes in with Emperor's Divide is the same moment where Lens gets excited. And suddenly, you see so much opportunity for these fights. And as we take a look, you know, I feel like these damage numbers are a little bit misleading. Victors often are because of how much damage he just does with the laser over the course of these fights. But you get to see there's so much pressure coming out from Wildcard, and it's every single member who has been stepping up. They stepped up very well to uh, take this win. Felt like every single lane was really just brutalizing Team Fish Taco. You know, great win to be found by Wildcard, but you know, it's a best of two series, so we got another game to go. While we set up for that next game, we're going to throw it over to Short Break. When we return, we'll have the Rally Cry Halftime Show. I said it in the right order this time, Josh, with Cubby. We'll be right back. <laughs> 